Yo, what is going on Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today we have another mock draft video coming at you guys. We are almost done with the 12 team PPR series. We are now on to the ninth overall pick. In case you're new here, we have done 12 team PPR mock drafts from the first all the way to the eighth overall pick. Now we're bringing the ninth overall pick to you guys. So we are very close to the ending of this series. Let's just get right into this mock draft and let's go see what kind of team you guys could be building from the ninth overall pick. First overall, Christian McCaffrey, followed by Saquon, Dalvin Cook, Michael Thomas, Kamara, Derrick Henry, Zeke, and Devontae Adams. In case you are not aware of this platform, this is Sleeper.app, which is a phenomenal place to host your leagues and do your mock drafts. I'm not being paid to say that. I'm not sponsored. I just truly believe that this is a great place to do all your drafts. So let's look at the players available. Tyreek Hill is my top ranked wide receiver available, but I'm not going to use my pick on him quite yet. At running back, Nick Chubb, Joe Mixon, Kenyon Drake. This is not a spot that I really like because I don't love Nick Chubb or Mixon, really any of those guys. And I'm not going to take a tight end this early. So this is one of my least favorite spots to draft because I don't see the value here. Miles Sanders, Josh Jacobs, I can get them later on in the draft for sure. Wide receivers, Tyree Kill, once again, I'm just, I'm not going to take him this early. So I guess I have to take a running back. And my highest ranked running back is Miles Sanders. But I think I'm going to take Josh Jacobs here because Josh Jacobs and him are in the same tier. But there is a better chance that Miles Sanders falls to my next pick. So I think I'm going to take Josh Jacobs, hope that Miles Sanders falls to me with my next pick. But I don't really, I don't like the start here. It's not anything that I can control. It's just the fact that I have a pick that I really, really dislike. And because the draft went according to ADP, I didn't get anyone who I like. If Devontae Adams fell to me, I'd be happy with that. But he did not fall. So we'll take Josh Jacobs, hoping that Miles Sanders falls to me. Then we see Julio Jones followed by, of course, Miles Sanders, because that's just what always happens to me. So Miles Sanders, Nick Chubb, Hopkins, Joe Mixon, and Kenyon Drake. Like I said, I swear this always happens to me, but it's not the end of the world. Austin Eckler is available. The reason I took Jacobs instead of Sanders was because I knew that if Sanders gets taken, even though I was really hoping that he would be available, I knew that Eckler would be available, and sure enough, he is. So we did have that safety net there. So Austin Eckler, I'll take him. I think he is destined for a great season. He was a top five running back last season. And yes, Phillip Rivers is no longer there. But no matter if it's Tyrod Taylor or Justin Herbert starting and maybe even playing the majority of the season, Austin Eckler is the focal point of this offense. Most likely he can catch, he can run, he can do a little bit of everything. He's always going to be involved. And there's minimal competition in that backfield. So we'll take Austin Eckler and I'm very glad to have him on my roster. Tyreek Hill goes, followed by Chris Godwin, Mahomes, Aaron Jones, Lamar Jackson, Gurley, CEH. Kittle goes ahead of Travis Kelsey. Very interesting there. Kenny Galladay, Mike Evans, Travis Kelsey, David Johnson, Fournette, Thielen, James Conner, and Juju Smith-Schuster. So with our eighth overall pick, you know, actually, I'm not going to spoil it. So never mind. I was going to say something, but I'm not going to spoil it quite yet because I don't want to reveal any information so I'm not gonna say what I was going to say but anyway looking at the running backs available we have Bell and Chris Carson I like Chris Carson the most there and we also have receivers like Allen Robinson and Odell but I don't see the value there because I think that DJ Moore Cooper Cup Ridley in the fourth round is perfectly fine at tight end we do have Mark Andrews so for me it's between Bell and Carson or Andrews. I was thinking about spicing it up a little bit and going with Mark Andrews because I normally go with Bell or Carson with my third round pick. And I wanted to spice it up with Mark Andrews, but I've been taking Mark Andrews quite a bit recently. So should I? Yeah, you know what? Okay, I'll go with Mark Andrews with this pick. Normally, I would go with Bell or Carson, but I take Bell or Carson in pretty much all my drafts. So I'm telling you right now, I would normally go with Carson or Bell. But I'm just going to spice things up and go with Mark Andrews. He was phenomenal last season. 
only played about 40, 42% of snaps last season, should have a bigger target share this season. Maybe not target share, but snap share at least. And I love that. Then Chris Carson goes, followed by Melvin Gordon, Le'Veon Bell, Amari Cooper, Allen Robinson, and OBJ. So we were going to take a wide receiver, so I don't really care that Bell and Carson went. We have DJ Moore and Calvin Ridley. Since this is full PPR, I'm going to be safe with DJ Moore. I think Ridley could certainly be a top five wide receiver. Not sure if DJ Moore could do that, but I think DJ Moore is much safer to be top 10 than Ridley. You can go either way there. You can even take Cooper Cup if you want, but DJ Moore just has a more secured workload than Ridley. Now, Ridley did nearly outscore Julio Jones through week 14 last season. He was out week 15, 16, and 17, so that explains why Julio Jones did much better last season. But when they were playing, they were neck and neck in points. But I just think that DJ Moore, he already saw his running back have a career year. It's not going to get any better from there. At least it shouldn't. So DJ Moore should have more targets this season. I love DJ Moore in 2020. Then Robert Woods gets taken, followed by Cooper Cup, Devin Singletary, DK Metcalf, Mark Andrew, AJ Brown, Jonathan Taylor, Raheem Mostert, T.Y. Hilton, Zach Ertz, Calvin Ridley, Keenan Allen, Cortland Sutton, DJ Chark, David Montgomery, and Kyler Murray. So it's our pick. And at wide receiver, first who I see, Terry McLaurin. Love him. Definitely could take him. Then we have Kareem Hunt, Cam Akers, Geis, and Dobbins. So it's tough for me. You know, it really is. I think that I normally would probably go with Cam Akers with this pick, but I already said we're going to spice things up, and we went with Mark Andrews with our third round pick, so I'm going to spice things up and make a very well-rounded team and go with Terry McLaurin at wide receiver. I love him. He's my top wide receiver left, but normally I would go with the running back just because you know, running backs are a priority. You always need to prioritize running backs, but you know what? Terry McLaurin, we saw his worst case scenario. He looked really good, really talented, playing on an awful team that threw the 28th, the 28th most pass attempts. It made no sense. They ran no plays at all. They're going to run more plays this season. Terry McLaurin is the focal point of this offense, but there are players like Adrian Peterson, like Antonio Gibson, like Darius Geis to take some attention away from Terry McLaurin. So they can't just double and triple team him all game long. Love Terry McLaurin, and he has that chemistry with Dwayne Haskins, so we'll take him to have two running backs, one tight end, and two wide receivers on our offense. On our roster, that is. Then we go Stephon Diggs, followed by Kareem Hunt, Marquise Brown, DeAndre Swift, Dak Prescott, and Cam Akers gets snubbed one pick before mine, but it's okay because Geis and Dobbins are still available. Now, you could go either way here. I always say that, and... I've been taking Geis over Dobbins for pretty much all season long, and I'm still going to do that. I like Geis more than Dobbins because I feel like he has a higher chance to be a RB1 than Dobbins does, but Dobbins is safer, so if you wanted to take Dobbins, I would not fault you for that, but I just think that Geis has a little more upside than Dobbins does, so we'll go with Geis with this pick, and actually Dobbins might have more upside because if Mark Ingram were to go down... Dobbins is an RB1 and possibly a top five running back, which Geis probably doesn't have that potential, but Geis has a significant higher chance to be an RB1 over J.K. Dobbins. And I don't really care if he's a top five running back. You know, if I can get one of them to be an RB1, that's what I really want. Obviously, top five is better than just an RB1, but I'd much rather have a much higher chance of having my fifth round pick or sixth round pick becoming an RB1 than a very slim chance of being a top five running back. Then we see Ronald Jones go, followed by Devontae Parker, AJ Green, Tyler Lockett, Gronk, Damian Williams, Russell Wilson, J.K. Dobbins, Watson, Brandon Cooks, Drew Breesy, James White, Waller, Landry, Jordan Howard, and Hayden Hurst. Man, that is early for Jordan Howard. I do not advise taking him that early. He's not even going to be the best running back in that backfield. I like Matt Breida more because of his receiving upside. But now it's time to fill up our bench. Looking at wide receiver, Gallup and Debo Samuel are the guys who I'd think about here because Debo Samuel's ADP is slipping a lot. Tevin Coleman's ADP has been rising quite a bit, but we don't even know if Raheem Mostert's going to get traded. Now, I do think that he will, which I talked about in my 
Raheem Mostert trade fantasy football impact video that I put out yesterday. If you guys want to check it out, link in the description below. But yeah, I don't think that Tevin Coleman going in the seventh round quite yet is justifiable because for all we know, Raheem Mostert could stay on this team. So wide receiver, I think, is the move here. And I'm going to go with Michael Gallup. We could use a fairly safe wide receiver because we don't have any backup wide receivers. So I just want a safer guy. And I think that is Michael Gallup. He still has a lot of potential, like Debo Samuel, but he also has a floor, just like Tyler Boyd. He's going to do good. He did great on 115 targets last season. CeeDee Lamb's presence does not concern me at all. There are so many vacated targets in this offense. I believe they're second in vacated targets going into 2020. Michael Gallup is going to probably get more targets than he had last season, so there's no concerns there. Evan Ingram, Edelman, Keyshawn Vaughn, Matt Ryan... Higby and Tom Brady, our pick once again. Quick look at running back. Tevin Coleman's there. You know what? With our eighth round pick, I don't see anyone who is that much worth it more than Tevin Coleman. Because at the end of the day, he does have low end RB1 upside. I don't think it'll happen, but being an RB2 this season is very, very likely, especially if. The 49ers trade Raheem Mostert and don't bring in anyone. He could easily be a high-end RB2, so we'll take Tevin Coleman there. I think he's very talented and has been underutilized for the majority of his career. Then Sonny Michel goes, followed by Tyler Boyd, Debo Samuel, A.A. Ron, Jerry Judy, Deontay Johnson, Marlon Mack, Carrion Johnson, Darius Slayton, Philip Lindsay, Alexander Madison, Will Fuller, Hunter Henry, Tariq Cohen, Matt Breida, and Marvin Jones in classic fashion goes one pick before mine because that's just what happens to me you know I always have my players get snubbed right before mine looking at tight end no guys worth taking there I'll wait later for my backup wide receiver CD Lamb is okay McCall Hardman's okay I don't really love any of those guys though and at running back Latavius Murray Antonio Gibson there's some guys there at quarterback we have a few guys left Allen Wentz Stafford I want one of them. I'm okay with Daniel Jones or Big Ben, but I think that Allen, Wentz, and Stafford are definitely on a tier higher, so I'll probably take one of those guys with my next pick, but I don't really care which one I get, so I'll just take a running back with this pick, and I think it's Latavius Murray. I mean, you could go with Zach Moss or Gibson, but hmm, you know what? Actually, since we have Darius Geis, I'm going to go with Gibson. It's not really a handcuff because Geis isn't like the star of my team, but I feel like it kind of is because Geis is really good. If he stays on the field, he is possibly an RB1. If he goes down, Gibson's probably a low-end RB2 or a borderline flex. So it sort of is like a handcuff because you know that one of them is going to be a startable player. So I'm going to take Antonio Gibson kind of as a handcuff, but also just as a player who even if Geis is on the field, Gibson could be a flex player for one or two weeks for you. Then CeeDee Lamb goes, followed by Latavius Murray, Josh Allen. Zach Moss, San Fran defense, goes in the 10th round. Highly advise against that, guys. Do not take defenses that early. And Emmanuel Sanders. So, like we mentioned, quarterbacks, we want either Wentz or Stafford. I like Stafford here. Now, I think that people are overreacting about their injuries. Stafford, most people, most experts say that his injury should not affect him. And Carson Wentz, a lot of people, a lot of experts are saying that he might not be injury prone, but people just say he's injury prone because he's missed so many games. But at the end of the day, we know from evidence that Stafford's injury should not affect him. Whence, there's just evidence showing that he might not be injury prone, but there's no evidence saying that he isn't injury prone. So he could actually be injury prone. Maybe he was unlucky, but there's also a chance that he's injury prone. Plus, you know, the Eagles sometimes do like to run the ball more than Detroit does because Detroit always likes to pass the ball. Stafford looked amazing last season. I think he's safer and I just want a safe quarterback who is not going to lose me my week. So I'll take Stafford here. Then Baltimore defense goes followed by Wentz, McCole Hardman, Henry Ruggs, Buffalo Bills defense, Jared Cook, Chase Edmonds, Jamison Crowder, Tony Pollard, Pittsburgh defense, Henderson, Justin Jackson, Boston Scott, Daniel Jones, New England defense, Christian Kirk, and it's our pick. So Quick look at running back. Duke Johnson is the guy who I like here. I think he is great. Just 
really kind of relying on a David Johnson injury. Otherwise, Duke Johnson doesn't have much potential, but he still will get, you know, five, six, seven points with David Johnson on the field. But if David Johnson goes down, which is not unlikely, Duke Johnson is an RB2 at wide receiver. We have Justin Jefferson, Rieger, Michael Pittman. Those are the guys who I like. Let's look at our bench. We have three spots, so I'm going to use one on a tight end and then probably one on a running back and one on a wide receiver. But the pretty much only running back left who I like is Duke Johnson. So we'll take him here. We can wait on our wide receiver. Then we see Noah Fant go off the board, followed by Justin Jefferson, Chicago defense, Jalen Rieger, Big Ben, and Cam Newton. So at wide receiver, we have Pittman and Nikhil Harry. Nikhil Harry is the guy who I like here. Tight end, Jaseki, Hawkinson, Jonu Smith, Goddard. There's plenty of tight ends who I like. Only one wide receiver who I really like. And yes, Nikhil Harry should be there with my next pick, but why even take a risk? I know that I'll have a tight end who I like by my next pick. Can't say the same thing about Nikhil Harry, so we'll take him there. I love him. Cam Newton loves targeting big wide receivers. He liked targeting Devin Funchess and Kelvin Benjamin. Nikhil Harry's much better, so he should be great with Cam Newton, and he still should be okay with Stidham as well. Anthony McFarland goes, followed by Naheem Hines, Austin Hooper, Anthony McFarland, Deshaun Jackson, Michael Pittman, Baker Mayfield, Brandon Ayuk, Sterling Shepard, Preston Williams, John Brown, Joe Burrow, Sammy Watkins, Justin Tucker, Mike Jusecki, and Harrison Butker. So now it's time to take our backup tight end. And Dallas Goddard's the guy here. If Jusecki was there, you could consider Jusecki. But at this point, we have Mark Andrews. We know he's going to be good, so we just need Dallas Goddard to be there for a safe player to sub in for Andrews when he's injured, when he's on a bye, and maybe if Zach Ertz goes down, then Goddard is a top three tight end, and that means that he could be better than Mark Andrews. He's at least a top five tight end if Ertz goes down, possibly top three tight end, so we'll take Goddard. Love that right there. Then A.J. Dillon goes, followed by T.J. Hawkinson, Carlos Hyde, Rashad Perriman, Greg Zerline, and Minnesota defense. Now we are just taking... A defense at this point and I like the Chargers here or you could go with the Seahawks or Saints or you could even go with the Cowboys I'm just gonna go hmm you know what yeah okay I'll go with the Chargers just because I like to stream defenses I like to take a defense and just take defenses that are playing bad teams and then drop them once they're playing a good team to pick up a new defense who might not be a great defense but they're playing a very good matchup in other words they're playing a bad offense so, yeah, and the Chargers have a good week one matchup. So they are a very, very favorable week one defense stream. So we'll take Chargers defense, not to mention they do have a good defense in general and on paper, and they have a slow paced offense, which is always good for team defense in fantasy football. Then Chargers former quarterback goes Phillip Rivers, followed by Robbie Gould, Tampa Bay defense, Dallas Cowboys defense, Will Lutz, Seattle defense, Zane Gonzalez. New Orleans defense, Young Hoku, Blake Jarwin, Fairbairn, Darrington Evans, Matt Prater, Jonu Smith, Drew Locke, and Damian Harris. Now it's time to take our kicker. So we have Fairbath, who is not bad, Crosby, Jake Elliott, Matt Gay. These guys are all good. I'm just going to go with Matt Gay because he's on a Tom Brady led offense, TB on Tampa Bay, TB. So that's pretty cool. I just realized that right now. I did not realize that until I just pointed that out now. But yeah, you know, Goskowski was always doing good under a Tom Brady-led offense. I don't see why it should be any different with Matt Gay under a Tom Brady-led offense, an offense that has an awful defense and a fast pace and a good offense that should be in some shootouts. So I'll take Matt Gay here. But whatever kicker, whatever kicker you want to take, honestly, is completely fine. Then we see Fairbath followed by Joshua Kelly and Eric Ebron is the Mr. Irrelevant of this draft, but he might not be so relevant because he does have a chance to get 10 touchdowns. He also has a chance to get 30 catches for 400 yards and two touchdowns, but he does have 10 touchdown potential as well. So before we end this video, let's take a quick look at our roster. To start out, we have Stafford who I think is good. He'll get the job done and he does have top five quarterback potential. He's on an offense that loves to throw and revolves around Matthew Stafford. 
Josh Jacobs, Austin Eckler, very, very solid running back core right there. We have a pure runner, a bulldozer in Josh Jacobs, and a receiving back in Austin Eckler. At wide receiver, DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin. We have a safe, very, very safe wide receiver in DJ Moore, and a little riskier wide receiver in Terry McLaurin, although DJ Moore has a huge ceiling, very, very high ceiling, and McLaurin does have a floor as well. We have a very, very good tight end in Mark Andrews, and a very good flex, Darius Geis. He has a lot of potential. Matt Gay, Chargers defense, they're irrelevant. Kicker and defenses do not matter. Then we have Michael Gallup. Love him as a third wide receiver. Tevin Coleman, Antonio Gibson, and Duke Johnson. That's just a lot of upside right there. They all have realistic RB2 upside, and they're pretty cheap. And then we have Nikhil Harry at wide receiver. I really, really like that. He has wide receiver two potential. He'll do good, good under Stidham, but he'll do even better under Cam Newton. And I think Cam Newton will play week one and play for the majority of this season. Dallas Goddard as our last tight end or our second string tight end. He's just there to fill in for, for Mark Andrews when he's on bye. And when he goes down with an injury, but he could be some trade bait. If Zach Ertz goes down, Goddard could be trade bait. Maybe even Mark Andrews will be trade bait at that point because if Goddard is better than Andrews, you could trade Mark Andrews instead of Goddard. So what do I give this team? I think this team's bench is weaker than it normally is, or at least weaker than my teams normally are, but I actually like this starting roster more than I usually do. I think that this is one of the best starting rosters that I've had. I wish I went with Miles Sanders instead of Josh Jacobs, but Josh Jacobs is still fine. I'm really glad that I took Mark Andrews because if I didn't, I don't think I would have been as happy. So I'm going to give this team an A-. minus. If I had a better bench, this would be an A team. And it seems like the majority of my teams get an A- minus or a B plus. So it's kind of repetitive. But I know that you guys have different opinions than I do, at least slightly different opinions. So you guys might have a different opinion on this team. You guys might think that this is the best team that I've had or the worst team that I've had. So I want to try to change up my drafts quite often. Let me know in the comments below what you guys would grade this. Would you give it an A- minus like I did? Or would you grade it something else? Let me know because I'm interested to hear what you guys think of it. If you have not already, but you are still here, please hit that like button because it helps me out a ton. And if you're still here, you clearly like that video. So please, it'd mean a lot to me. Show your support and hit that thumbs up button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button because I put out nearly daily content and I don't want you guys to miss out at all because I'm going to prepare you guys for your drafts and throughout the season, I will continue to post almost daily content. I also have a lot of content on my Twitter account. I put out daily content there as well. So if you do not follow me there, definitely go follow me there. I am going to do some more mock drafts with you guys, with subscribers and Twitter followers. And you have to be following me on Twitter and subscribe to me here on YouTube if you want to be in some of my mock drafts with real people. So definitely make sure that you go follow me and subscribe to me. So make sure that you go follow me on Twitter and are subscribed to me here on YouTube. And before you guys go, I just want to give you a reminder that if you have not seen the Raheem Moster trade impact video yet, I highly recommend you go check that video out. It's one of the most important videos that I have put out on my channel. I explain the real life impact and the fantasy football impact. So I'll have the link in the description below to that video if you haven't already checked that out. But that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Peace.